So today I'm here to talk to you about the Behringer HD400. It is an ultra compact two channel hum destroyer as they say. And I just bought it to get rid of a ground loop. So here it is. It's quite a simple device. It has two inputs and two outputs. So four TRS connectors, but you can also use it. So you can use it with balanced or unbalanced uh, audio cables. So the problem I was having was I was recording bass and I wanted to record an amp plus a DI signal. And when I went to go do that, I was getting ground loop hum in my bass amplifier. So here is the recording chain I was using when I came across this ground loop. I was recording my Sire P7 bass, which then goes over here to a Sansamp pedal, which then goes over to this MXR EQ pedal that I was using as a splitter. And then one of the cables comes out of this and heads over to my bass amp. Ampeg bass amp. And then the other output of this MXR pedal comes over here to my Day King Mic Pre 1. So now I'm going to turn on all of this equipment so that you can hear how loud the amp starts buzzing with a ground loop. So now I turned on the recording chain, but you can hear how loud this Ampeg bass amp is buzzing with a ground loop clearly audible. So now I'm going to put in the Behringer HD 400 to eliminate the ground loop. So now I just put the HD 400 into the signal chain between the first output of the EQ pedal that I'm using as a splitter and my Daking Mic Pre 1 and notice that you no longer hear the ground loop present coming out of the bass amp speaker. So you saw what my problem was and how I resolved it. Now let's take a look at how the HD400 affects audio quality. So I did a couple tests for all of you. One test with a guitar sample and one test with a bass sample. Now listening to those audio samples, clearly we can hear that there's a bit of loss of high frequency information. It's an important point to take into account if you are considering buying this device or using it. I also took the device apart and inside it's basically just a transformer between each output. So there are two transformers, one for each line. And as we know, transformers can be quite expensive. If you've ever tried to buy a high quality audiophile transformer, you know that they can cost you easily as much as $100. And this is a $20 device. So what are my conclusions about this device? Well, I appreciated having this device for the problem that I was working on, where I was recording two signals out of a bass guitar, one for the amp and one for a DI. So I use it on my DI signal and usually when I record an amp and DI, I use the amp for the high frequency information and the DI for the low frequency information. So in fact, in this case, I didn't actually use the high frequency information of the DI signal. And so the loss of high frequencies was not really a problem for me. But on the other hand, you would not want to use this device, for example, on a guitar where often you record a DI in parallel with an amp, not to be used together, but to have a DI signal in case something goes wrong with the amp signal and you want to re-record it. In which case, you'd be kind of out of luck and you would lose some high frequency information that you might want if you want to use that DI signal to reamp the guitar or the bass. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up or if you got something out of it.
If you'd like to see more videos on home recording, please subscribe to my channel. If you've had ground loop issues, I'd be interested in hearing about them in the comments below. Or if you've resolved ground, ground loop issues even better, let me know uh, how you handled it. What's your favorite way of getting rid of ground loops in your home studio? I appreciate your time and I wish you a good day. Bye bye. So I wanted to test the HD 400 to see what sort of audio quality it delivers. So I set up two tests for you. We have one test with a bass and one test with a guitar, both DI signals. So in the case of the bass, we're going into, I'm, I'm using my Sire P7 bass, going into the Boss RC10 R using it as a looper, into my Sansamp Paradriver DI, and then into the HD 400 or not, depending on the scenario, and then my Daking Mic Pre 1. And so the signal is going to be played back using the looper both times to make sure it's exactly the same signal. And then I perform another test with a guitar. This time it's the Squire Baritone Telecaster that I recently reviewed on my channel. Into the looper, into the Sansamp GT2, and then uh, one time I play the recording through the looper and through the HD 400 and one time from the looper all the way through without the HD 400. 